welcome to the 127th edition of Maple Wrestling Majestic again. I am Tiger Height. And I am Peanut Gallery. So, we're just going to hop right into it. We have a lot going on. We have a lot to talk about. Let's first talk about Raw on my soapbox. Drew McIntyre. Did he join Judgment Day or is he just aligned with Judgment Day like what Carlito is with the LWO? I don't know, but... This was a great clay, uh, cliffhanger. McIntyre needed the heel turn. He was already sort of testing the waters anyway. But what does this mean for war games? Because there's already four on four, unless they're going to be adding McIntyre. But I can't remember the was, war games were always five on five, right? Nope, not always. Oh, really? Oh, all right. So I guess they can add him there, but. I thought this was a great way because he interrupted the tag title match and this was the final picture for it. So overall, this gets a full thumbs up. Really, nothing here stood out to me as like that big grandiose match, unfortunately. I mean, it was an acceptable show, but it wasn't exceptional. So it wasn't like a Raw to go out of your way and watch. It just felt like a Raw. A good Raw perfectly acceptable if you have some time to kill but not one to go out of your way for so other than the main event there's not really too much else to talk about nxt oh and by the way i totally forgot raw got 1.467 million instead of 1.522 and it was a 0.44 demo instead of a 0.47 so it went down in both now let's get back to nxt NXT had 703,000 watch instead of 794, and a 0.21 instead of a 0.26. So two shows, two downs. Not sure if that's a good or a bad thing, but we're just going to roll with it because I like this show. I actually enjoyed this NXT more than Raw. I thought the main event between Wesley and Baron Corbin was good. I really liked the Brawling Brutes match with OTM. Uh, the stuff with Trick Williams and Joe Coffey was nice, especially with the Carmelo Hayes stuff. So a lot of stuff here worked, but there was one that kind of didn't for me, and that was the Tag Team Championships, where it went from Chase University back to the D'Angelo family within a span of, like, what, two weeks? Something like that. So it's like why did why bother putting the titles on andre chase and again testing the waters it? yeah but there's another way to test the waters other than them having uh, the tag titles why do that it just it, it doesn't make sense at, at least to me personally uh other than that there wasn't really a whole lot outside of there that sort of uh blew me out of the water so it was once again acceptable but not out of your way to you know get it okay so, uh, Dynamite, and usually I harp on Dynamite. I liked more on this Dynamite than I hated. It was the go-home show for full gear. You wouldn't have known that at all, given uh, how they booked this kit and caboodle, like, to be honest with you. Oh, that street fight, though. Uh, Kota Bushi apparently discovered McDonald's. He is, he does not have that muscle mass. He does mm -hmm. not look like the megastar. And somehow he turned whiter. I have no idea how he managed to do that. It was very impressive. And that bicycle spot was absolute ass. <laughs> but despite that one spot, it didn't ruin the match for me. I actually enjoyed it. I don't know how Paul White managed to get his ass on top of a thing with Powerhouse Hobbs. And then a it, Powerhouse Hobbs scoop slammed him into a car. Holy I was shocked. But really, that was the only spot that Paul White had. He and Powerhouse went to the back pretty much immediately, mm -hmm. which led to me saying, why in the hell was he in the match in the first place? But once again, other than that, I did like this match. Uh, the Young Bucks doing heel tactics. We saw that follow up. The Guns faced jobbers. There was a lot of jobber matches. I wasn't a big fan of that either. Uh, the Swerve and Hangman Page segment was good. It was very good, and I think with the match, it sort of fit. Mm -hmm. uh, MJF segment meant absolutely nothing. He said nothing. He did nothing. And the show itself had 823,000 instead of 804, and it was a point two eight demo instead of a point two seven. But usually go home shows tend to have bigger ratings anyway. But that was really it for Dynamite. Let's go into Impact. 
Uh, once again, I don't have numbers for this one, and the main event was Will Ospreay and Josh Alexander. It was a good match. I enjoyed it. There were people who had a problem with the Sunny Kiss and Trinity match. Do you people realize that Sunny Kiss is gender fluid? Right. They can face anybody pretty yep. much under those circumstances. Yep. And yeah, I get it. Biological, but guess what? It's pro wrestling. It is violent theater. You can literally have Trish Stratus wrestle Andre the Giant, and they can make it work somehow. Right. And it's, Sunny Kiss just happens to make it work because Sunny Kiss is of a smaller disposition. So yeah, it Sunny, works Sunny perfectly Kiss, well. Yeah. And they actually had a fun. I like this match. I thought it was a perfectly acceptable match. Uh, Sunny Kiss was one of those stars they were really touting within AEW mm -hmm. very early on. Uh, but then they just sort of lost interest. We'll, we'll talk about the shiny objects that Tony Khan likes. We will. Uh, ABC took on Kenny King and Shelton John for the Impact World Tag Team Champions, but I guess this was Kenny King's final match with Impact Wrestling. Mm -hmm. He was granted his release. Uh, the Rascals have a new member. His name is um, uh, Myron Reed. He's from MLW. I called him the Token Black, and I stand by that because he is. I did not know he was part of the Rascals at all. They were talking about it like he's always been there. News to me. But there you go. And they faced off against a bunch of luchadors, including Juventud Guerrera. So that was kind of interesting. Um, of all the shows so far, this one had by far the best match. Mm -hmm. But it's... This match, there you go. SmackDown, uh, last week they got 2.119, and what I'm hearing from early... Uh, I, from I early heard I heard they got a big bump. Yep, I heard the same thing. So. Which is surprising, considering this was the weekend where they went up against uh, Collision head-to-head. -head. And Collision fell on his face and did yeah. absolutely horrendous. It, it was not good. Um, I also didn't watch Collision. Once again, uh, quality of life improvement. <laughs> uh, everything was essentially around damage control with the new members. Right. And 100%, this was the right call. It was the biggest shakeup within damage control, the biggest thing that happened at the end of SmackDown last week, and the follow-up was good. Segment before, they did backstage stuff to find the other person, and then Becky Lynch showed up which I think is great. Uh, I'm hoping Becky Lynch and Charlotte manage to... Uh, Keep things professional? Uh, it's, it's Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch. They're going to be professional about this. But I hope that their personal relationship is at least somewhat mended given that they are working together. Right. In, in pro wrestling, there is a certain amount of trust that you have to have given pro wrestling. You have to like your coworkers, or else they're going to shoot right. on you. Anyways. And especially in a match with war games, you have to be able to do mm. that. Even though they're teaming, it's still a cooperation. So I'm happy about this overall. Uh, Santos Escobar went full heel, and I love everything about it. <laughs> uh, the Street Profits are the new tag team champion number one contenders. So that is cool. Their match is next week against Judgment Day. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they will be okay with this because... Street Profits just turned heel, new theme, new attitude, and they're winning matches. And then you automatically put them with Judgment Day, who are pretty much the most over thing on Raw. Right. Unless the Street Profits are going to win this, this is not going to be good. Well, I think this might be the moment where they split the Tag Team Champions back up. Oh, I didn't even think about that. So maybe they're only going for the SmackDown Tag Team well, Champions. Well, as, as of right now, it's, all, it's for Undisputed. Right. And they, but, they, but, they tried to do that with the Usos, where the Usos would defend the Raw Tag Team Champions and then the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Right. I think, I, I wonder if this is going to be a more permanent split, but you never know. You never know. But other than that, there wasn't really a whole lot. I liked it. Uh, Ellie Knight and Jimmy Uso had a fine match, but really there wasn't that... Oh, and Dragon Lee and Axiom just had a freaking great match, yep. too. That was a very good match. So, uh, so a very pleasant SmackDown. I really like this SmackDown. And finally, NWA Power. It was from the 14th. Uh, EC3 took on Talos for the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. We had Colby Carino defending the Junior Heavyweight Champion and Pretty Power defending the Tag Team Champion. So a lot of title matches in a structured show that I liked. The one thing that I have to say is that the NWA added somebody new, a throwback of sorts. Uh, Paul Birchall is joining. Um, huh. Yeah. Uh, you know, Blast from the Past, I haven't seen Paul Birchall in yeah. like 10 wow. years. Yeah. Hmm. So he is joining. 
I guess he's joining the Spectaculars, but essentially that's his way to get into the NWA. Ah. Um, but I like this. They are continuing to promote the territory system. I kind of wish they would flesh it out a little bit more, but it is what it is. Uh, I like Talos. He is a he is a good big man wrestler, and EC3 has dumb tattoos. I'm sorry. He just has lines. It's so weird. I don't get it. Uh, but it's his body, his choice, I guess, right? Yep. Um, but really, that was it. That's that's really my soapbox for this week. Peanut Gallery, what are we talking about? Well, we're going to talk about Tony Khan's shiny new toys because right. I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> you are? Yeah, I am too.